Hi guys, welcome to Facebook Live. I'm your host Rose and this is... I'm your host Lauren, welcome. <laughs> Today we have a very special guest, um, Ethan, and we'll be introducing uh, you to him shortly. But for now, let's jump into what we're going to be going over today, Lauren. So today we're really going to talk about what's in and what's out for 2021 and what careers are trending that you might want to consider this year if you're looking to start a new job or start a new career. Um, so we'll talk about what careers are going to be in demand, how to prepare for a new career, and Penn Foster courses you can start and finish this year. But before we really get into all of that, Rose, why don't you tell us a few disclaimers that we need okay. to cover and then talk a little bit more about our special guest. All right. So today when you um, want to ask us a question or you have anything specific that you want us to know, please send us a DM and keep your personal information out of the comments. So, you know, your, your student number, your address, please do not post any of that stuff in the comments. Send us a direct message. We are there for you as well. Also, if you have, a, if you're a student, uh, if you have any questions about your program, give us a call at 1-888-427-1000. And if you're thinking about enrolling and uh, you're watching this and you decide you want to give us a call, that number is 1-888-427-6500 and that is admissions. Um, before we jump in to getting to know our buddy Ethan here, um, don't forget we're all over social or all over the internet. So check us out on Instagram, check us out on Twitter. Uh, don't forget to like react, share this. If you know anyone who's wondering what's in and what's out for 2021, as far as industry and career stuff goes, shoot this over to them, give them the idea, put it in their head and be like, Hey, now's your time to do something good for yourself. So just, you know, give it a share, give it a like. Um, we really put yes. a lot of hype behind who Ethan is. I feel like we hyped I know, it up it's like. <laughs> There should be like an unveiling and be like, da da da, -da horns. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the big moment. <laughs> the moment you've hey. all been waiting for. Oh <laughs> <laughs> Our special guest is Ethan. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hi, hi. I am uh, I'm Ethan Buckwick. I think Rose and Lauren purposefully did not uh, say my last name because it is pretty hard to uh, pronounce sometimes. Um, that was great to pick up on. Uh, I'm really excited to be here today. Um, I'm really excited to be kind of like in front of our students. Um, I do a lot of things behind the scenes for students. So I'm really excited to um, talk about some of those things that we're doing and um, and be here with you all today. Um, I guess I'm supposed to say a little bit, I guess, more about uh, me and what I do at Penn Foster. Um, so uh, I really work as kind of our, like, I guess, internal program expert, you could say. So basically, you know, I really work um, kind of with a lot of a lot of different teams within Penn Foster, but a big part of that is our, our product uh, development team. Uh, so I really have a lot of insight into how our courses are being newly developed, how our programs are being improved. Um, and what I do is then kind of take that information and make sure that we can really elevate it and emphasize it to our students so that you all know about those great developments. So um, yeah. we'll talk about some of that today and I'm excited to get into it. Ethan's definitely an expert in all of our programs and courses. So when it comes to the look and the feel of your student portal, um, you know, when we do a new certifications for a program, anything like that, Ethan is on that. He's working to constantly enhance and better our program because that's what life is, right? It's constantly improving, improving, improving. And Ethan does a really great job at it. And he knows a whole bunch of good stuff. <laughs> I, I wouldn't know all that stuff without without all, all of the other people who are even more behind the scenes than me who are really <laughs> listening to what our learners are saying, studying the really important data about how our students engage with our programs and working to improve them from there. So it really is a group effort here at Ben Foster. Great point that you brought up that you said that we're listening to our students. We really do. We're listening to our students. When you have feedback, when you take a survey and you're like, this was weird. This was glitchy. I didn't like this. Um, I wish the program included.
those things <laughs> and consider that. so it's fun that you brought that up because it's just kind of that like since we're kind of behind the curtain today it's just kind of like one of those fun details you know yeah and we get feedback from a, from a lot of different channels and there's multiple different teams within Penn Foster kind of reviewing all those different channels so we really do have a good wealth of data whether it's numbers or actual feedback conversations you know our student services and admissions teams are amazing because they relay a lot of that feedback to us and um it helps and it's like you said it's heard and you know we put it into practice because the most important thing to Penn Foster is our learners at the end of the day absolutely Totally. So because of all of that, um, and because we're listening to what you guys need, what's going on in the world, Ethan does have a lot of great insight into what career. The pandemic and everything going on, things are changing. So um, he is going to be sharing a lot of insights into what is kind of up and coming now where the opportunities are career wise. Um, so Ethan, start by maybe telling us a little bit about what's happening in the medical field right now and what's needed. Yeah, that's a great, great place to start. Uh, so, you know, I think I think it's clear that, you know, to everybody that 2020 was uh, an unprecedented year on a, a number of different levels. And obviously, you know, one of the biggest things that happened throughout that year was, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic. Obviously, we're still dealing with that. But, you know, it's really interesting because, um, you know, as an as an education provider, you know, Penn Foster really had to quickly respond and react to how COVID-19 was impacting, you know, our learners, um, our partners, um, you know, because Penn Foster really is a big part of the the healthcare field and and the skilled trades fields. Those are really two big areas that we focus on, um, really enabling learners to be successful and jump into careers. Um, and a big thing that happened in 2020 is it really, you know, unfortunately raised a great deal of awareness of how, you know, kind of understaffed our, our um, healthcare industry is. Um, mm -hmm. So it's interesting because this has really always been a strong industry with, for opportunity, um, but there continues to be more and more. Um, and there's there's really two great courses here at Penn Foster um, that are really going to be extremely in demand, you know, moving forward in 2021. And those are uh, medical assistants and pharmacy technicians. So just a little bit on the medical assistants, you know, they're really needed in clinics, doctor's offices, hospitals, nursing homes. I know it can sound a little bit scary working in those places, given given the terms, but, you know, it's really in demand and you can really make an impact for people. Um, and you, you know, a little bit more about the role, you'd really be balancing between, you know, the role of a healthcare professional and an office administrator. So it's really good for people who, you know, kind of have a background in certain skills and are looking to um, advance their career. And it's also great for people who are looking to kind of um, enter into a new space as well. Um, you know, a lot of it deals with understanding medical terminology, diagnostic procedures, um, handling records and office procedures. Mm -hmm. um, and Penn Foster actually offers two programs here. We have um, the Medical Assistant Career Diploma uh, and our Medical Assistant Associate Degree Program. So obviously, you know, there is a, dif a big differentiator between those two. Our Associate Degree is, um, you know, a much higher level um, course that takes a bit longer to complete. You know, there's a, a bit more um, general education and things like that there. Um, and then for our career diploma, that's really focused on, you know, the the, the nitty gritty information that you need to know to be able to um, enter into the field of working as a medical assistant and succeeding on the job. Um, right. So for something like um, the medical assistant degree versus the diploma, the degree could possibly help a little bit more on a resume because it's a little bit higher up. Would you agree with that or? So I think I think it's one of those things. I think we, we well, we offer these programs for a reason because there is um, a demand. There's a demand for both. And it's really um, mm -hmm. up to what the learner is looking for or what situation they're kind of in. So, you know, um, the career diploma would be for someone who is really looking to enter into that field um, a lot more immediately. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, who who knows? Maybe, you know, maybe you, you already have an opportunity to um, be a medical assistant, but you need some training to ensure that role. You could take a Penn Foster course to ensure that employment. Um, 
because it teaches you all the fundamental skills and things like that that you ultimately need. Um, the medical assistant as associate degree, you know, that's for someone who really has um, a little bit more freedom to invest a little bit more time in their program. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, all of our programs are, are self-paced and things like that, but the medical assistant associate degree has a lot more um, additional content and lessons um, that are not applicable to necessarily the job function of a medical assistant. So it's really a case by case basis for our learners. And that's why we offer both. Um, and I think that's something we'll talk about a little bit more, you know, how you can kind of determine which program might be best for you. Right. And our yeah. admission specialists are always available to talk about that too. Yeah, um, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Outside of just checking things out on our website, I would always recommend speaking to one of those folks because, you know, they're extremely knowledgeable about our programs. They are up to date with all the information I get. So um, they're a really good resource. Yeah. And sometimes it's nice to have just that one on one with somebody and, you know, you talk about your wants and interests and they help you find those things. So, yeah, that's that's good to know that there is a two different programs for medical assistance. Um, what about farm techs? I think you mentioned farm techs. Yeah. So, you know, that's or something. pharmacy I mean, techs. <laughs> yeah. So, so there's um, a pharmacy technician, um, pharmacy technician career diploma program. Um, and, and that's something where, you know, coming out of that program, you can immediately you can you can be certified and you, you're sorry, you're prepared to take the certification exam um, right out of that. So that's another program where we're really preparing you to enter into the workplace and succeed into the workplace. Um, it's it's really it's really one of our top performing programs for good reason because um, it's a highly sought after program because it is demand is it is in demand but it also is a really you know successful program as far as placing our students into roles afterwards and seeing them succeed um, and having that aligned with a industry certification obviously helps there um, but you know, this is really important now, especially knowing that the vaccine is going to be being released and um, those are going to be, you know, yes. And those are going to be kind of like released through a lot more, you know, of your general pharmacies. And we need people to be staff there to to, you know, deliver that vaccine. But beyond that, you know, the the medical industry, you know, there's always a need for people like this. But um you know, kind of a little bit, right. a little more, bit of, now more than ever, right? <laughs> ab yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a really, uh, you know, it, it's in demand because there's um, there's kind of a strain on this industry right now. You know, there's a, there's a, a strain, and they need help uh, um, because there, there is a vaccine coming out. You know, with an aging population, you know, there's going to be long term effects from COVID. You know, I know personally there's a, a few um, people in the medical field that that are friends of mine that have kind of discussed kind of things internally about, you know, the long term effects of people who, you know, um, ultimately, I don't want to say survive COVID, but, you know, people who uh, get better, you know, they have long term effects. They do need to go through kind of like rehabilitation periods and they are going to be required to take different you know, medications and things like that to help them. So, you know, if you're working in this role, you're really a part of measuring, mixing and labeling, you know, medications under the supervision of a, of a full fledged pharmacist. So, you know, it provides an opportunity to get into a field where not only is it in demand, but there's also a real, you know, um, growth trajectory there because, um, right. you know, it's, it's something that requires multiple kind of levels of certification, um, accreditation, and things like that to, to move up the ladder. So there is a lot of opportunity within that field as well. And also with medical assistant, because you're entering into a field with, a, you know, a huge, a huge opportunity to um, continue to take more education on and climb up the ladder. I think another thing that you said um, is really important too, that there is career stability here, because even though like these jobs were in, the, in demand before the pandemic, the pandemic is happening causing greater demand, but then with these long-term effects of COVID, there's going to be increased demand for for a while, even mm -hmm. after we have the vaccine and we get it a little bit more under control. So and and yes. not only that, it 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 certainly was a wake up call to people too, mm -hmm. Lauren. So I think there's a lot of people who may have not have been as health conscious who are going to be even more health conscious. And you know, even just thinking about it before COVID, like I think people may um, not take for granted, but um, if you really recognize how many CVSs, Walgreens, Rite Aids there are, all of those have a pharmacy. Right. You know, 
so and there's more and more of those being you know built and developed and and things like that all over the place so um not only does that present a greenfield of, of opportunity opportunity but additionally you know throughout throughout 2020 20 there was a higher demand higher demand on telehealth so it can be delivered to you but you still need to have a consult with a with a pharmacy technician you know to make sure you're getting the right things make sure you're using them correctly so you know the telehealth um the buildup of the telehealth industry is going to continue to you know boost the need for more people in that pharmacy technician role you know pharmacists in general right and we so, have a lot of other the medical field i think itself is booming pretty much in all directions. And we have a yeah. lot of other medical programs. I think these two are really awesome to highlight the medical assistant and, and farm tech programs. Um, if anybody is interested in, in joining the medical uh, fields and, and you want to kind of dig around and see where you would be best to fill a role, say if it was something like medical billing and coding, where you're working more uh, maybe remotely and doing more of a, of a clerical kind of thing versus more hands-on, um, check out our website. We've got, uh, Ethan, do you know how many medical programs we have? We have so many programs. Sometimes it's hard to you know, let me, let me think real stuff. quick. I, I would say we, I would say we have, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, I, I would be confident in saying we have, you know, close to 20, you know, there's, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of variance in the medical programs that we offer. Like, I mean, you just said medical billing and coding. Um, there's also you know, medical transcriptionists. There's home, exactly, exactly home health aides, uh, you know, nutrition program. program. There's, a, there's a really a, a wide array of things related to the medical field, healthcare, nutrition, you know, um, really just the human body, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, exactly. and whether it's, whether it's like traditional medicine or kind of like more holistic things, like a lot to, um, we really do have a lot there. So it's, it's really for, for the long out here, the people who are, who are watching this, you know, uh, on your mindset and what you're in, because I, I guarantee you, there's really, uh, you don't have to pigeonhole yourself into an opportunity. There's, there's really a lot of opportunities that Penn and Foster can provide for you. Um, it just takes a bit of a little bit of research. So uh, on that note, health is another it's another area. Um, so there's definitely opportunity and, and growth here as well in 2020. And so Ethan, can you talk a little bit about some skilled trades career that are on that are on the rise? I'll talk to a couple of things that are on the rise, and then we can kind of, and then I'll, you know, again, it, it's interesting. A lot of these. Um, programs and the fact that they are in demand are tied to a lot of the same themes. Um, but, you know, two programs that we're really putting a lot of effort into are our um, electrician program and also our HVAC program. So, you know, electricians are really needed for both residential and commercial jobs. Um, you know, and over the next 10 years, that job is supposed to grow by about 8%, you know, 8 to 10%. So, you know, that's a much faster growth rate than a lot of other jobs. Um, and I think what's important about these skilled trades positions is, you know, I, it, it's hard to not talk about things in about the impact is doing in 2021 is to respond to is to continue to respond on to uh, um the effects of 20 opportunities for yourself. Um, you know, electricians, uh, that's extremely important right now because, you know, like we've noted, a lot of people are spending more time in their homes, are recognizing um, home improvement projects. But outside of that, you know, a lot of people, it's interesting, you know, maybe maybe some people don't necessarily want to talk about it, but, um, you know, with, with kind of the way our 
country is there's a lot of people who have you know whatever let's just say it second homes things like that other opportunities and and uh this this opportunity of working more remotely being home has allowed people to give more attention to things like that so there really is a lot of opportunity of growth in this area because people are putting a lot more attention into their home versus you know yeah. their car or their place of work people are a lot more present in their home and in their life so um you know that's important it's also important for the commercial industry and you know we should really talk about the fact that um un- unfortunately these were also two industries where you know skill trades there was a lot of um it, skill trades there was a lot of unemployment that kind of occurred throughout 2020 um just by the way that you know, organizations and corporations were hit by it. But as we now move into 2021 um, and things are, you know, stabilizing a little bit, um, those places are going to need to grow up their workforce again. They're going to need to build that up. Um, I think the interesting thing about a skilled trade versus some other fields as well is that when you learn how to become an electrician, you have those skills And that's something that even just for yourself, like doing your own electrical work around your house, or you have the opportunity to start your own business. It's, it's something that is essential. Everyone needs an electrician at some point, you know, it's just an HVAC is another, that's interesting too, because, because of COVID now we're looking Mm -hmm. at people yeah. updating their HVAC units to make sure that they're better sanitizing, that they're, you know, techno- technologically up to date. These are air quality has become very important. So it's yeah. just interesting how these things, I, I, I just feel like a skilled trade really follows you. It's like always something good to know and fall back on because people need skilled trades. Oh, right? absolutely. I I will back that up 100%, Rose, because, you know, I I know for myself personally, I'm not the most handy uh, person. <laughs> and, um, you know, I wish Come I on. did have a lot more of these skills because, um, like, there's things around my apartment that I wish I, I wish I could do. I'm capable of doing them, but I don't necessarily know how to. Um, and, you know, there's people out there. Actually, I'll point to an example. I have a, a friend of mine who, uh, during this time, um, him and his him and his fiance, you know, bought kind of a home uh, as a fixer upper. They're not flipping it; they're going to be living in it. But you know, he's he is self taught and learned all these skills on his own, and now he doesn't have to pay contractors or people to come in and do this. Um, to do this, uh, what do you call that when you when you call that when you redo your home? I guess um, it'd be construction, <laughs> carpentry, yeah, whatever it is. All of the yeah. work to um, there's a rent, lot sorry, of renovation. Be a plumber. So, <laughs> So he's doing all of his renovations on his own. Um, that's awesome. That's probably saving him a ton of money. And again, yeah, this is something where, you know, you get a lot of fulfillment out of it. And also, you know, backing up to your point, Rose, about the the HVAC piece, this is really, really in demand. You're right, because of the air quality. Um, a lot of, um, you know, brick and mortar locations, office spaces, things like that had to be shut down because they didn't meet air quality standards. And um they wouldn't they wouldn't be deemed safe due to um, the pandemic. So all of these places are going to require a lot of work. They still they're, they're currently being worked on, but there's going to be you know more demand for the, for work on these heating and cooling systems, air purifying systems, everything around that. Um, and and a, a really great thing about the HVAC program, and, and this is kind of something we'll get into a little bit around kind of our investment into developing new programs. You know, our HVAC program is something where um, back in, you know, it's not for, it, it'll really impact students in 2021, but back in um, the fall of 2020, we released um, a next generation courseware revision for this program. So now when you take our HVAC course, you're really going to be presented with a lot of um, interactive practical assessments. You're really going to be given the opportunity within your, within your lessons to um, not only learn and digest this content, but have an opportunity to kind of like practice it, simulate it, and then, you know, crazy enough through a virtual remote learning experience, see how you would then apply that skill in the workplace. Um, that's a big, that's a big thing. And I think something Very that our students will really be excited about, you know, I, I know there's nothing like getting your hands up and using the uh, but you want to be able to do that from the comfort of your 
No. Or to be so, exposed. Uh, you know, some places just aren't safe right now. Yeah, exactly. So, and also, know. I mean, as technology grows, it's like you really can use things from the your health. In the world I have, I have an opportunity to really see um, how these how these lessons are being built what the yeah. examples look like and and they are extremely user intuitive and you know a lot of times what i do is sit in a position as a student and kind of like experience things um so it's a huge improvement to the learning experience um there's a lot less with with, with a program like this there's a lot less um reading you know and things are things are um presented in a way so that you can really digest them as a student retain that knowledge and then when you are in the workplace you know you can be confident that you'll be able to apply it you know you really won't you won't lose it because you've been able to you know instill those skills and those those um concepts in your brain through through the new um through the new lessons yeah i think also my husband has a background in skilled trades and it's one of those things that like i was saying before if you have that knowledge you have that knowledge it's a great side hustle it's a great thing to know if you know there's something that happens and you're out of work and you know a trade. If you know a trade, you know that trade. It is something to fall back on. It is a talent that you have. And I just think it's one of our personal, um, almost like a, a retirement, part of a retirement fund or something to have those uh, essential skills. It can help you um, just kind of create a little bit of security in your life to have it's you know it could be a full-time gig it could become a huge company it could become it could be a side hustle it yeah. could be a little sense of security for you and that could be something like plumbing we like everybody has toilets like this yeah, is like that, and, and again that's another that's another program that's getting this next gen revision because again that's another in demand that's another in demand program like you said yeah you know it's it's you don't want to oversimplify it like that but yeah everybody does have plumbing needs plumbing it's just a, yeah it's a need it's something that none of us can escape you know so we do have a lot of other skilled trades and you know we even have some stuff like solar stuff and stuff like that that's going to be growing in the future um yeah. again if if you are interested in a skilled trade and you just want to learn, um, you know, little little handiwork, a little a carpentry, things along those lines, uh, check out our website. We've got a lot of good stuff on there. Yeah, I think it's important to emphasize how much control and kind of fulfillment comes with those skilled trades um, careers. Yeah, I mean, personally, if anything breaks in our house, we got it covered. And I love that. That For me, that is a sense of security. And I think mm -hmm. that in such uncertain times, um, it is nice to just feel a little bit more secure in things and especially in your ho own home where you're where you're stuck in, but also to have those skills and to be able to use them and always have those talents that other people need makes you in demand. So yeah, it makes you in demand. That's a good point. Yeah. So speaking of being at home more, because people have been at home more this year, they're noticing things around their homes, but they're also adopting more pets or getting yes. more pets. So this yes. has resulted in higher demand for um, careers in the veterinary field because more pets, your home more, noticing your pets, um, you know, you want to get them checked out and make sure that they're healthy and they're well taken care of and well loved. Um, so Ethan, can we transition a little bit into talking about some really hot veterinary programs that we have? Yeah. And careers. These these veterinary programs are like too hot to handle. <laughs> um, but no, you're right. Like veterinary medicine, it's a career field that really always is in demand. You know, as much as anybody who doesn't have a pet likes to say people are a little bit too obsessed with their pets and treat them really like children, they really don't understand what it's like to have a pet. Yeah. Or, you know, whether it's a dog, cat, bird, uh, turtle, like whatever it is, you know, you have a real bond and you don't want to see um, that animal suffer. You don't want to see anything bad happen to them. Um, right. I know personally throughout COVID, I think I've probably been to the vet um, like once a month. And that's not because yeah. my dog's always sick, but there's a lot of there's a lot of other things that come with animals. You know, they may have um, they may have anxiety. They may have different things that they kind of struggle with. Like I can't clip my dog's toenails at home because she's too anxious about it. I have to bring her to the vet. Um, so. This is an extremely vital role because these are two great programs. It's an extremely vital industry because so many people rely on 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 their vets. And honestly, I think a lot of people really, 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 truly appreciate um, their their vet 
not only their vet, but the vet assistants and vet technicians. So, um, key- and a lot of, I think a lot of veterinary clinics are growing their clinics with more techs versus more veterinarians. Um, yes, exactly. That's a great point, Rose, um, because there's a lot, like I said, you know, there's a lot that I go to. For, I, um, many of the visits that I make to the vet, I'm not seeing an actual, um, you know, veterinary doctor. You know, it, it's the yeah. it's the assistant or the technician who's who's doing um, who's who's doing the 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 job. Um, so that's a great point to make. Um, so first off, we have our vet assistant program. Uh, that's a career diploma, a career diploma program, and that's great because it gives you the opportunity to get into a hands-on experience um, with a job externship. So, you know, not only are you gaining um, the education that you need right off the bat and the actual tactical um, conceptual skills, but then you get to apply that um, in an externship, and ultimately, a lot of that ends up leading to you know job placement because you know you work, you do an externship somewhere, and they're like, hey, you really earned your keep, and we want to keep you on staff. You know, I think the great thing about uh, the veterinary industry as well is there's a lot of opportunity to grow and 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 have an upward trajectory. You know, get in with the job that leads to a career. Um, and kind of the natural progression, you know, veterinary assistant, you can get, you can then transition to being a veterinary technician. This is also something where you can get the education and just enter into the field as a vet tech. So um, our vet tech program, that's an associate degree, um, but that really helps further your opportunities beyond just, you know, vet offices and clinics. You know, you'll really be able to work in places like a zoo, you know, a wildlife facility, humane societies. And I think that's a piece that we didn't really mention in the beginning about how in demand um, the veterinary field has become, because it's not just taking care of your cats, dogs, turtles, whatever. It's about taking care of gorillas, you know, and tigers and animals that that need to be facilitated. Lauren, you know, there's people out there who are taking care of sharks, you know, imagine being a vet whose job is to, you know, check the temperature of a great white. So, so important. (laughs) I think I think a really cool thing that we necessarily don't talk about the veterinary industry is just how vast it really is and how much opportunity to do some really, really cool things it presents. Um, Mm. You know, if you're someone who loves animals in any which way, you know, this is a really great career for you because it offers you the opportunity to do something you so closely are passionate about. On top of that, it allows you to get into a career um, that's within reach. And that has an opportunity to continue to grow. So um, I'm really excited about how we further, you know, enhance these programs um, in 2021. Uh, I'm really excited to kind of hear more about like some student stories um, from our veterinary uh, students and graduates. Uh, I know we already have a ton of great stories um, of success there. So, you know, I would say this is something this is this is an area. Where I feel like it's it's pretty it's pretty easy to get in not pretty easy to get into but it 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 it, it doesn't take as much to convince someone to to get into the veterinary field and there's there's a lot of opportunity um, and you know a lot of different ways to go with it not only with the role but with the um, with where you would work with what type of animals you do work with you know uh, you could kind of go on and on about it and there's so many kind of specialties within it. The cool thing about all three of these fields, the medical field, the skilled trades field, and the veterinary field, is that they truly are, all three of those fields are very rewarding. I mean, you're doing important core work that we all need. And, you know, I know a lot of people like, especially like skilled trades, there's an artistry to that. There's a lot of pride in that. Um, Obviously, if you love animals, the veterinary field is like pretty good place to look for some joy and fulfillment and to to feel like you're really helping and of course the medical field i mean this is just the most fundamental the health of other of humans and each other and helping each other so it, it's interesting how all the three fields that are are hot in 2021 are really passion fields these are fields where you can get a, a lifelong rewarding career out of it yeah and and they're necessary right now you know, right. it, it, we, you know, it, it's interesting because every every year you really want to talk about what's in demand, what's popular. This is a year where it's not about like necessarily what's popular or in demand. It's like really about what's necessary. And, yeah. you know, the reason why we're highlighting these programs is because 
2020 really showed Penn Foster what is necessary. And we started to address that, you know, within all the craziness. But now 2021, we're amplifying that because we learned a lot through 2020 and we're really putting that into practice, you know. So these these three um, these three kind of sections that we're talking about, it, it's it's vital because we we learned it. We learned it throughout the year. Um, you know, a lot of hardships came with it. But, you know, with that, it presents a lot of opportunity moving forward now. You're so right. So we know that there are all these great opportunities out there and they are attractive for people to enter, especially right now to start if you're looking for a job or a career on that career journey this year um, to really start working towards being in those careers. But sometimes it is a question and it is like a little bit difficult to figure out how to really prepare to enter a new career or to enter into a career at all if you're just maybe coming out of high school and you're wondering what to do. Um, So Ethan, what's your advice on how to prepare to enter a new career or to start out in your career in general? Yeah, well, you made a great point, Lauren, you know, just about kind of the, you know, the, the, the big range in experience, you know, lifestyle, age, all of those things that, you know, like we have a, we have a very wide range of, of learners and, and um, so, so it's kind of a good thing to start there because uh I personally would say as my advice to someone who's entering into a new career, whether you are that, you know, student who just finished, you know, high school and is looking to kind of enter into your career or, you know, whether you finish or whether you're looking to transition from one career to another, or maybe you're someone who um, unfortunately uh, lost a career opportunity and are now looking to gain something new. You know, there's a number of different ways there are num- there's a number of different positions you may be in when you're approaching the prospect of a new career. Um, and I think whichever starting point you're at, I think it's really good to take first off, like really a personal, a personal assessment, you know, really think about what is important to you, um, something that you enjoy, something that you would, uh, you know, we, uh, we just talked about feeling fulfilled, feeling rewarded. You know, I think those are those are really good places to start the conversation with yourself, um, and then from there you can start to narrow down, you know, kind of the the options for yourself. You know, so, so um, say you're someone who identifies that you really would like to work in the medical field because not only are you interested in healthcare, but also you really do get a lot of. Um, really, you do get a lot out of working with other people, you get a lot of reward out of helping others. Um, you know, you can look so that so from there, you know, you really should make sure you do your due diligence and look into the various programs that are offered, you know, like we just said, you know, for, for the for the healthcare side of things, you know, we offer maybe close to 20 different um, programs. So, you can compare look at those um also i think i think specifically for folks who are looking into penn foster you know we alluded to them earlier you really should look into speaking to our um you know admissions resources um student services because you know they can they can help you make some of those decisions you know sometimes it's hard to uh, make a decision like a new career path totally on your own you know you kind of do need some outside input um And you also need to really understand what you're getting yourself into. So uh, the due diligence is a big thing, you know, understand what's important to you. But then from there, you know, make sure you really are looking into um, the career outcomes. It's a great thing, actually, you know, on all of our courses on Penn Foster, um, you know, you can see what the career outcomes are, um, what type of opportunity there is, uh, what your career might look like, what your job, you know, would ultimately look like. So make sure you consider all those things. Yeah, there's a ton of information on our website. Each program that you go to, I think each program has about five tabs, five pages of information that you can go through and learn, you know, if you finish this program, A, what might you qualify for? Like which roles, you know, there'll be a list of roles and it'll give you a list of the skills that you'll learn, you know, fully. So there's just no guesswork on your end. So it's all there on the website. And then, of course, when you talk to an admission specialist, it's just more and more info. So if you're looking for that info, like you were saying, due diligence, 
you know, do a little bit of research, um, find out exactly what's best for you. And there's just so many options, so many options to choose from. And I think that is a really good way to prepare for a new career. It's like, find yeah. out exactly mm -hmm. what, what you're going to do and then see if you're like, yep, that suits me. And then dive right in because we make it really easy to dive right into the training. And even if you are someone who may not have the luxury of maybe you are someone who's really in a position like you're in a position of need. You need you need another you need a new job. Or you need to get that job quickly. Um, you should I would still you know highly encourage you to 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 take the time um, to mm -hmm. compare, you know make sure you're comparing programs looking looking for what really speaks to you. Um, you know, and a big thing too, is if you do have kind of some, some downtime as you're like assessing which type of career to get into, you know, a, a good exercise is to kind of take a step back, look at your resume, maybe make a refresh on it. Because if you look at what your current resume is, and that can kind of show you, you know, kind of a path for yourself. You know, there's a lot of things that we get kind of swept up in just doing our day to living our day-to-day -day lives and you know when you take a step back and look at you know kind of a culmination of what you've done and what your experience is even if you are someone who's in high school i'm sure you've done things and maybe you can put together more of a personal resume you know that may be a cool exercise like my personal resume and that can kind of help inform a lot about yourself that maybe you kind of you know don't have the insight into on a day-to-day -day basis because you're just kind of living life. But, you know, I personally really joined Penn Foster because I believe in what we do and I believe in people um, finding the opportunities that make them happy. So mm -hmm. do that. When you come to Penn Foster, really make sure you're considering your happiness, your family's happiness, um, and where you want to be because what we're doing is building our lessons to help you get there, you know? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Guys, if you're looking for any more tips on how to prepare for a new career, we have a great blog on this subject. So our Backstage Buddy does will drop that in the comments and you guys can definitely follow up and do some more reading if you're looking for a few more tips or to really think about this a little more. Yes. So I have a, a question. So we went about, we talked a little bit about like what was in. Mm -hmm. So that means something has to be out. So what, what is out for 2021? So for what is out in 2021, I, I can definitely speak to a lot of things that are, you know, specific to what we're doing at Penn Foster, you know, and this kind of help, this kind of does flow into what's in. I know we've been talking about that a lot, but really some things, some things that are out for us personally um, are um, really kind of outdated traditional learning models. Um, I can't remember if we mentioned this earlier, um, but in the next six months, um, Penn Foster is going to be rolling out multiple next generation programs. And what I mean by next generation programs is um, we have really leveraged the online learning technologies that are available to make lessons intuitive, to create a much better learning experience um, and to allow for students to um, be as job ready as they can be after they graduate that program. So um, some of the more like details on the, the features of these new programs, most of them um, also I will allude most of them that are going to be released are related to skilled trades um, because that's an industry where you really need to focus on the application of skills. So right. um, we we really are giving very, you, those are very hands on ideas, you know, building. Yeah, things. it's cool because yeah. um, Penn Foster's really always been a, a great um, preparer of skilled tradesmen and women but the education for that has had to change and you know you're, you're right you pointed to um how hands-on those types of things are with with these new programs where we're meeting the need to be hands-on virtually and remotely so students are able to watch um not only are they able to watch like video demonstrations where you know uh, actual prevent so for hvac for example Example. you know there's a number of video simulations within your within your lessons that are showing you that you know it's a HVAC professional showing you walking you through you know how they how they fix an AC unit 
you know, that's a very high level example, but you're getting actual demonstrations from a professional. And then, you know, after you watch that demonstration, you're given like a really interactive practice assessment so that you can quickly show, oh, so that you can quickly retain that knowledge. You know, you see something, you get an opportunity to implement it in the practice assessments, you know, and then from there, you're, you're able through, through different exercises and things like that, demo, you know, demos, other things like that, you're kind of able to, you know, apply that skill on the workplace. So, hey, you just watched, um, you know, Bob, the HVAC guy, fix an AC, <laughs> fi you know, fix an AC unit, he showed you how to do it. You took it, you took a, a quick practice assessment to make sure you retain that knowledge. Okay, now we're going to give you um, access to interactively fix that AC unit on your own. Um, so you get to under, so you really do understand, you know, the the concepts of these things, the um, the functionality um, that you need to understand, the tools that you need to understand, but you don't need as much physical equipment. You know, you really just need your laptop, your textbook, and you're good to go from there. Um, and another part of, of the updates with these next gen programs, it's really about reducing the amount of time a student has to spend reading. We want to increase the amount of time they spend learning and less time that they spend reading. So Which I think um, we all love that. Yeah. Yeah, so like, music <laughs> to many ears. <laughs> yeah. So like the, the content within each of these lessons, like it's much more digestible. You know, you 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 are going it's it's the key points. It's what you need to understand. And um, you know, really a big emphasis or um, impetus for doing this is because we recognize that we needed to be able to um, meet people who have, you know, our learners have a really wide range of learning styles. But with this next generation, with these next generation lessons that we're going to be rolling out and these next generation programs that we're rolling out. Um, oh, my God, I just lost my thought. Um, sorry. <laughs> well, there's, um, there's so many cool facets of the next generation stuff. That's yes. rolling out. And it really, it makes me kind of think about how, you know, I've said this to you before, Lauren, like we do a lot of reading, humans do a lot of reading, but reading is an invention. It maybe isn't exactly how we would learn naturally. I mean, if we were, if it was a hundred thousand years ago, you're not going to pick up a textbook to learn. Something. You're going to learn it from someone else. They're going to show you how it works. So yeah. it, that's kind of a quicker exactly. way that our brains work. And I think we're trying to target that with our how our courses are going to be built in the future, how we're rolling these out, starting with skilled trades. So it is just more intuitively learning instead of having to have this almost like middle step of reading, digesting it, and then learning. It's just a way more organic flow. Exactly. Right. If you're someone who likes to work with your hands, you probably are somebody who really is going to enjoy seeing a skill in practice versus right. reading about it and then trying to imagine it. It's just it's removing the imagination. You can see what the skill actually looks like. And reading is only one vehicle for learning. And I think we all get very hung up on, on you know, you know, intelligence equals reading a lot. That is not true. <laughs> There's so many different kinds of ways to learn. And I think that's another thing Penn Foster's really trying to target. Like, let's yeah. explore all these different ways to learn. Let's make learning easy. Why does it have to be? <laughs> this arduous task, you know, why does, why does, um, why do we have to, you know, battle our own attention span in order to learn things? Like, let's just find new ways. And that is something that we are always working on. And we used to send textbooks through the mail. I mean, we've been around since 1890. We have always been discovering new ways to make it easier for people to learn wherever they are. And yeah. the more technology we pick up, the more we get your feedback the more we're going to enhance our programs in the future. Definitely. Yeah, it, and it it's this this really points to you know what we were kind of talking about in the beginning with listening to the learners and the students and um, also looking at the data. You know, we want to make sure that students progress through these programs. You know, at a rate that is. Um, well, we want, we want, yeah, we want, we want, we to, want you to complete your program. You know, we, we want, want to put you in a position to succeed. Um, and I think the great thing is technology has caught up to 
a lot of the forward thinking that Penn Foster has done. And now the goal is really marrying those two. You know, a lot of the things that we've wanted to do, we have the opportunity to do that now because of the way you can learn online and learn virtually and the advancements in, you know, the types of lessons you can build. You know, it's really it's really cool. Uh, as I go through and test out some of these things, you know, I just think, you know, who would I have been if I had these these learning uh, materials at my disposal, you know, when I was going through different levels of education or, you know, maybe I would be something totally different right now in my career. Right. If, it's never too if late an to start. Even. Just saying it's available now. It's not. You're right. It's never You're right. To start. <laughs> Speaking of starting something. Um, just to kind of move us to our last topic today before we go, it's a new year. So this is the perfect time for a new start for so many of us. We're making New Year's resolutions. We're making our plans to better our lives and move forward with our lives um, this year for the better. Um, with that, sometimes comes a certain amount of impatience. So, you know, we have so many programs. They are on your own pace. So um, you can take the time that you need to take to complete them. But if you're somebody who is looking to get into a career sooner versus later and to start and end something this year, um, there are programs that we have that you could start and finish within 2021 if you are dedicated in doing so. Um, so Ethan, what are those programs that if you are if you are committed to starting something and finishing it this year, what could you take? Yeah, well, you know, we have a we actually have a good amount, but you know, there's some as we're, as we're really talking about in demand things and things that are popular. Um, you know, four courses really come to mind outside of what we already discussed. So, uh, you know, I, I actually almost mentioned this when we were talking about the veterinary industry, but um, you know, we also have um, courses, or sorry, we also have a program where you can learn dog grooming. Um, in addition to that, you can also learn dog training. So, you know, you can learn how to actually, and that's something where you can start um, your own business doing that, um, you know, being a dog groomer, um, also um, being a dog trainer. And that's something too, I think with people being home more and more, uh, you know, you could be that person who, hey, I come to you, I groom your dog, I come to you, I train your dog. Um, or that's also something that it could really just be for your own personal benefit, you know, you and your pet. Um, another really, another really cool. Um, oh, sorry, Rose. <laughs> I was gonna say there's a lot of. I've been noticing that there's a big uptick in like even dog walkers and stuff like that, and people mm -hmm. always want to or dog sitters and whatever assessing their skills because people are not just allowing anybody to handle their dogs. People want to see some yeah. kind of veterinary stuff. Yeah. So if you if you have um you know dog training and dog grooming things like that on your on your resume, you just become even more valuable. And, you know, it's the same thing. Like I said, you make yourself, um, you make yourself the what's in demand, like you're in demand. Yeah. And you're, you're adding credibility. Like you're adding credibility to yourself a lot as well. Um, another career too, uh, is event planning. So, you know, this is actually it, this is actually a really great career to get into because, again, it it has uh, it offers a wide range of opportunities. You know, if you're looking to work in more of like a commercial setting as an event planner, you can work at uh, you can really work within the hospitality industry. There's a number of opportunities, whether it's, you know, working out of, um, you know, like a hotel or or something like that, you know, managing their event space. Uh, but also working for hospitality companies, you know, such as such as restaurant organizations and things like that. Um, and then there's also obviously wedding planners, personal party planners. You know, it's really a vast area. But those secondary things, wedding planners, party planners, you can really do that as an individual contractor or start your own business. Um, and it does almost seem like it's counterintuitive event planning right now because we're all home and we're all not going anywhere except that. And I don't know about you guys, but Lauren, I'm going to pick on you here a little bit. Everyone I know is getting engaged and getting married. Um, everybody has these big plans coming up. They need to be planning now. So there is this this interesting need that I'm seeing for mm -hmm. event planners too. That it it just it doesn't feel like it shouldn't it should be right. But it, I've have more events coming up in the next few years that people are planning ahead for. We need just, things to look forward to. Right. Yeah. yeah it's true. <laughs> I think I think what also kind of you know it 
with 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 my personal experiences too, working at other places like event planners that's also something that's really um integral to corporate america as well you know every you know a lot of companies large and small do have an event planner on staff because networking events um recruiting events etc yeah. et those are all really crucial to the um sustainability and success of an organization so you know it's kind of interesting we look at that from more of the like uh social world but there really is a lot within the corporate world for event planners to to add a lot um of success um mm -hmm. so it's a cool it's a cool industry to be in too i mean I, I working with different event planners and stuff i mean um you're a pretty cool person if you're an event planner you can really do a lot and handle a lot and manage a lot and you are a very valuable resource so um yeah that's an amazing career and and also you know kind of being home uh things like that working remotely us who are here on this um lovely facebook live are all in a different space um before this call i was having it issues actually and um a real so time another, need. what's that a real time need for the, yeah the next yeah so um I, and I, I keep put i keep burying the lead but the program we have an uh also a a newly um redesigned program our it support specialist program so um you know this is for this is a great program for people who like working with computers um maybe even after we're allowed to go back to the workspace continue to want to work remotely um you know people who want to work on their own schedule uh this is an extremely in-demand career for basically any or you know it's, it's in demand for any organization you can never have um you know companies can never be staffed with enough IT support specialists. Um, and again, this is another area where, you know, once you kind of get in on the ground floor, you really do have an opportunity to continue to prove your value along the line and progress in your career. Um, and it really can lead to, you know, a pretty, a pretty, pretty, pretty high earnings as you, as you move up the ladder and even at a base level um, when you first get into the space. So um, a huge green field of opportunity for IT support specialists. It's also amazing, you know, because you really could work at any type of organization. You know, it's something where you can be very technically savvy, but also work for something that, you know, is associated with a passion. So um, that's a really cool program to look into. And um, I think, you know, provide some of the best opportunities out there. Yeah, we all run on IT now. I mean, it's just yeah, we are yeah. now. <laughs> whether and that's whether you're whether you're working um, your job, whether you're uh, a consumer, you know, you're 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 working whether with you're IT all the different times. On so. Facebook Live right now, checking out what Penn Foster's up to. <laughs> yeah, IT is all um, over the place. And then I think, you know, our last program to speak to is our career readiness boot camp. You know, I think that's something where if you're questioning what to do, um, just getting started looking at a new career, you know, this is something that can kind of really help you determine what you're looking to get into and also, you know, prepare you to succeed in that program once you do make a decision. Um, so that's something I would really recommend to anybody who is, um, you know, exploring Penn Foster. And I think that another good point about these are you could start and finish them this year, um, yes. some well less than a year, some you can start and finish yeah. in a matter of just a few months. A career readiness boot camp where you learn all these awesome professional skills and the stuff that employers that are looking for that you wouldn't necessarily put on a resume, but more of what they're going to understand about you in a job interview, which is very important. It's your next step closer in the door, having those soft skills and customer service and things along those lines, mm -hmm. communication that can be finished in six weeks. So yeah. there's definitely ways you can enhance, like set some, set some realistic goals and get some stuff done out the gate in 2021, because let's start improving here after 2020. Totally. <laughs> it is time to improve. It's time for things yeah. to get better. Yeah. <laughs> So I think we covered a lot of amazing, amazing things today. Um, I personally learned a lot about all of these fields. It's inter interesting to know a little bit about where the medical field's going, where veterinary is going, where skilled trades are going. Um, we have a lot of programs you can start and finish this year. Please go check out our website again. Or if you need inspiration, whatever, give somebody a call at admissions. Uh, that number again is... 1-888-427-6500. Again, any students out there who have any questions, if you're 
looking to um, maybe we just talked about something that you're interested in. Maybe you're in a, you were a vet assistant or you're in vet assistant. And you want to pursue vet tech. Call student services. We can help you out. 1-888-428-8847-1000. Um, we're always here for you guys. We're here on Facebook Live every two weeks, all over social. Um, if you're a student, we're in the community. If you're a grad, you know, we're, we're always reaching out. Um, we're here for you. We, we really want you to succeed. 2021, I hope we're all hoping that this is going to be a, a good year that we can, you know, like I said, improve, 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 make some progress towards better things. So reach out to us. We're here. Ethan, thank you so much because you. you know yeah. so much about our programs and I think we have well over a hundred. So thanks yes. for um, touching base on a good deal of them today. Um, and, yeah, and, and I realized even as we're wrapping up that there's some stuff that like we didn't even get to. So um, we'll have to have you back because there's there's definitely. so much. Yeah, there well, I, I really appreciate you two having me and kind of as a, uh, you know, piggybacking on your point, uh, Rose and Lauren, about making 2021 great. You know, if anything, you can really use 2021 as a time to work to improve yourself and, and your individual life, you know, and, and education and um, career opportunities are the best way to, to do that. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world, but, you know, we're here for you and you can be there for yourself and really, you know, invest in yourself and, and, and put yourself on a good track. So, um, I hope everybody has a great 2021 and, um, I hope to be back sometime soon. Yeah, Definitely. Right. Thanks so much, Ethan. Thanks and so thank much, you all. Ethan. Thank you. Bye everybody. Bye guys. Bye.